Today we are talking about my all-time favourite GCSE topic, space. Let's have a look at the planets. Now, we don't include Pluto, sad face, because it is now classed as a dwarf planet. There are lots of others like it. Um, we just happen to be discovered in the early 20th century. And some of them have their own moons. We call them natural satellites. Jupiter and Saturn have absolutely loads between them. We keep finding more. It's going to probably going to reach 100 soon. Now, bigger than planets, let's look at the scale of space then. So all these planets and moons and asteroids and comets make up the solar system, which is made up of things that, generally speaking, orbit the sun. Obviously, moons orbit planets, um, but the whole system orbits the sun. Now, bigger than that, our solar system is one of many in our galaxy, which is called the Milky Way. So the Milky Way galaxy is made up of approximately 100 billion stars bigger than Milky Way and we have the universe overall which contains many different galaxies lots of different types um, it's like 100 billion probably bigger than that now it's a really common mistake to talk about the wrong thing so when we're talking about the universe that's the Big Bang when we talk about planets that's our solar system um, and we'll come on to it later when you might want to talk about galaxies in the context of evidence for the Big Bang in part one of this video and uh, we are going to talk about stars we're gonna look at how they're born how they live and how they die so first of all all stars stars start off and they form as a nebula uh, which is a fancy name for a cloud of dust and gas um, bits of atoms um, that are left over from other solar systems usually now that uh, when they come together will form a protostar then after a protostar has existed for a period of time it becomes a main sequence star and the main sequence star like our sun uh, can go one of two ways depending on if it is a heavy high mass star or if it is a low mass or average star so um, let's do um, our sun first of all so the low to average mass uh, after it's been a main sequence star will become a red giant star then it will become a white dwarf star and after all the radiation is emitted from a white dwarf it becomes a black dwarf now for high mass stars it's slightly different instead of a giant they are a red super giant star and after uh, that stage you have what's called a supernova after that stage you go into two different sections called either a black hole or it forms a neutron star now, a lot of people get tricked to GCSE into thinking that's enough to answer a six marker. It's not. You have to be able to not only describe the stages, so that's what I've just done there. That's probably going to be maybe two out of six. You have to be able to explain how to go from one stage to another. So why do these different stages form? Why don't stars stay in the main sequence forever, etc. Okay. So in red around the diagram, I'm going to annotate it, which is a good idea to do with your notes, um, to help explain what the different stages, uh, what happens in them. So the first one is how does a protostar form so a nebula or cloud of dust and gas is pulled together by gravity even though dust and gas doesn't have much gravity enough of it gets pulled together over millions of years next one we have our protostar forming um, the protostar is kind of like the stage before the star um, and this is when if pressure uh, and temperature is high enough uh, for nuclear fusion to occur or to begin but essentially nuclear fusion is when two light nuclei usually hydrogen uh, combine together to make helium and it releases energy but this only happens at high temperatures and pressures, so you need a lot of the matter um, in one place under high gravity for this to begin. Next stage, main sequence star. This comes up a lot of times in exams. This is the stage our sun is in currently. Um, it's been there for about 5 billion years, and it will continue to be there for about another 5 billion years or so. So let's look at um, what it's like. Now, it's a very stable um, phase. Stable meaning the forces acting on it are balanced or in equilibrium. So the forces that are going inwards um, are gravity, gravity pulling everything uh, inwards. Um, the forces outwards are a bit trickier to describe, but they are caused by the thing we just talked about, nuclear fusion, nuclear fusion release, releasing energy. And you'd say a phrase like pressure from nuclear fusion. Now, if those forces are equal or balanced, then the star stays the same. Basically, that's why our sun doesn't change day on day. It doesn't get bigger or smaller. Now, once that stage is finished, um, we are going to uh, talk about what happens when it goes to the red giant or red supergiant phase. So the red giant, first of all, uh, which is when uh, nuclear fusion um, is hydrogen to helium in main sequence stars. Once the hydrogen runs out, then it is no longer a main sequence star. What will start happening is it starts to fuse heavier and heavier elements. So instead of hydrogen, hydrogen, it might be helium and helium. Then it might be carbon, it might be oxygen. These heavier elements mean that it expands into a red giant and it has a different color. 
in the red supergiant phase, this happens to elements all the way up to iron. So iron's quite heavy element, atomic number uh, 29. Um, in a red giant, so like our sun, you get heavier elements, but you won't get up to iron. After this point, all fusion will stop at a certain point for a low to average mass star. And that point it shrinks back down, becomes a white dwarf. Then even that radiation ceases, it becomes a black dwarf. Now for a supernova, all fusion stops once it gets to iron, but the result uh, is a bit more spectacular. So in a supernova, um, let's think of all the forces acting on a star. If fusion stops, then there's no outward force. So there's just gravity acting. So if there's just gravity acting inwards, what will happen is the star will all of a sudden kind of start to shrink. It will start to get smaller until it gets to a core, a really dense core of iron. Then it will suddenly kind of rebound and expand outwards. And that's the supernova, an explosion of a star all expanding outwards, throwing all the elements inside it all across the universe. Now, these elements are heavy elements, um, not just all the way up to iron, um, but you can have uh, heavier ones than iron. What gets formed at the end is a black hole, which is a very, very dense object um, or a neutron star. Okay, part two of this video is going to talk about the Big Bang, which we have a bunch of evidence for. So evidence number one um, is something called redshift. Evidence number two is something called CMBR. Redshift is an example of something called the Doppler effect. Now, the Doppler effect doesn't apply to stars or space necessarily, um, but it can apply to any wave. So let's look at an example. So let's say you're standing in a street and you hear an ambulance um, drive past you. Now, the ambulance has obviously got its sirens on, it's on its way to emergency, it's emitting sound quite loudly. So you, as you hear the ambulance go away from you, will have a different perception of the sound to someone on the other side of the ambulance. So let's say the sound waves hit you as it goes past you. Someone on the other side of the ambulance, which is travelling towards them, the waves are slightly closer together because the ambulance is travelling towards them. Now, as you can see from the diagram, if you compare the wavelengths, if it's traveling away from you, there's a longer wavelength. If it's traveling towards you, it's a shorter wavelength. For sound, um, a longer wavelength sound means that it a, is a lower pitch or a lower frequency sound. And a shorter wavelength means there's a higher pitch or a higher frequency sound. Now, with redshift, we apply this to distant objects in space. So let's take our two people again. Um, let's say they're in different um, parts of the universe um, and we've got a galaxy that's emitting a light. If it's traveling away from us, it will have, like we talked about, a longer wavelength. So let's look at the colors of the rainbow and see which one's got a longer wavelength. So uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Hopefully you can see from the diagram that violet and blue has a shorter wavelength and red has a longer wavelength. So as the galaxy travels away from the person or the observer, the wavelength it is giving off is slightly shifted towards the red end of the spectrum or a longer wavelength. And if it's traveling towards you, um, it's what's called blue shifted, which means the wavelength has been decreased. So it is more blue shifted. Um, how you describe it in an exam um, is redshift is when light from uh, emitting from a galaxy so not star definitely not planets but galaxies because they're really far away that's what we can see uh, that are moving f away from earth has a sh re shifted towards the red end of the spectrum now you could say it's got a longer wavelength here as well and um, there'll be uh, also some extra information to put in but please don't say it's more red that doesn't get you marks it's hit shifted towards the red end of the spectrum now, um, if we want to talk about something that's blue shifted, um, obviously you replace red with blue um, and that'd be something that's moving towards um, the Earth um, and it'd be shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum. Now, we don't talk about blue shift as much because m almost all of the galaxies we observe in the night sky, apart from our nearest uh, neighbour, um, is red shifted. So what that means is if we were to observe all the different colours in a spectrum, now don't worry too much about what a spectrum is, um, we learned a little bit at A level, um, but it shows all the different colours and there are what's called absorption lines. And if these lines have shifted slightly towards the red end, like these ones have, then that shows us that the light from that galaxy is red shifted and it's travelling far, um, it's moving further away from us. 
So what do we notice when we look at all these things? Well, we actually notice that almost all those galaxies are redshifted. So actually almost all those galaxies we observe are moving further away from us on planet Earth. So let's look at then if we were to plot a graph of these two things. Um, and this is something that Edwin Hubble did um, over 100 years ago now, um, which is to look at the velocity versus the distance they are away from us. So the further away they are, are they moving faster or slower? Well, actually, if you plotted all the points, um, there's a fairly positive correlation. And the two things are actually directly proportional because it's a straight line and it goes through the origin. So what that shows us is the further away a galaxy is, the faster it's traveling. So the further distance, the higher the velocity, and that means that it all came from one point, which is the Big Bang. Let's have a look at evidence two, CMBR, which stands for Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation. So cosmic um, means kind of to do with space. Um, background is just, it's in the background. Radiation is a type of radiation. Now let me talk about a little bit how it works. So the analogy I'm going to use is that of a balloon. Um, so a balloon is like space, um, it's expanding. So if I was to draw a little dot on the balloon or a symbol, if I was to then blow up the balloon, the dot stays the same, but it kind of expands. This is representing space expanding. Now, cosmic micro background radiation. Radiation is a wave. So if I was to draw a little wave on the balloon, it would expand out to be an even bigger wave with a bigger wavelength. So how we'd go about describing the EM, sorry, the uh, CMBR um, is to say that radiation, um, this is from a long, long time ago, this is from the Big Bang itself, or the, the very um, short seconds after the Big Bang, uh, wavelength has increased because or as the universe has expanded, so has expanded outwards. Um, and this is a big deal because it actually was predicted before it was discovered. So this is a massive evidence for the Big Bang being true, so this radiation has expanded to the microwave region of space. Um, now, if you were in school in a few billion years time, um, if you look at the EM spectrum, currently it's microwave. If it was to expand even more, have a higher wavelength, it would actually become radio waves. But don't worry, it'd be quite a few billion years before that happens. So hope you found that video useful. Uh, please leave a like if you haven't done so already and check out my other videos for GCSE Physics.